Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool Atari Asteroids repair video for you today. We are working on this Asteroids arcade game, and everybody always loves our Asteroids repair videos. And this one's an interesting one, so I figured, hey, let's film a video. So there are two things that I have found while working through this. Now, if you're wondering how I'm working through it, if you look, we've, did, we've done an entire series, or a couple of them, I think, on how to fix an Asteroids game from bottom to top. And that's the way we do it. We start at the bottom where the power runs in. Uh, but the power supplies, the PCB board, and the monitor. On this particular, so if you if you have a specific question about the power supply, or the PCB, or the monitor, if you go look on our channel, we've got videos about how to fix everything on an Asteroids, basically. Um, so we've gotten up to the point where we're testing it out, and the board is up and running, the power supply is working, but the monitor is not working at all. So there's two things in this cabinet that I found so far that are really interesting, besides the usual garden variety stuff that you run into. So one of the things that I've ran into is the board has this little daughter board on it that's been added. That's not an original setup. And I have no clue what it is. I don't know what it's for or anything. We're going to do some research and figure out. But there is a little sign on it that says, Warning, Edge Connector This Way. And they're telling you that so that you don't put the board in backwards. It'll go in the socket the other way. Um, whenever we got the game, this was just hanging down inside the cabinet because it had fallen out of the socket. Depending on what it is, I'm probably going to take it off and put, it, put the thing back how it was originally. But it may be some kind of like speed up hack to make the asteroids move faster or something or it may be uh some kind of i don't know what it is i'm not sure what it would be for that's the only thing i can think off of the top of my head i've heard before that they've done hacks where all of the asteroids move faster or something like that so maybe that's what's going on that's what my guess would be but we'll figure it out but the reason that i can't tell what it is is because the monitor doesn't work so the monitor is a um i believe it's a wells garner v2000 uh, I believe it's a Wells Garner V2000. So, monitor's not doing anything. So, uh, the first thing that you do is all of the wiring goes up to the deflection board first, and then it goes over to the high voltage unit. And if you can hear it making noise, so it'll go, there's a little stuff moving around. It's basically creating the... They call it vector chatter. It's creating all of the math, basically, that moves everything around on the screen. Uh, if you can hear that, that means the deflection board is working, but I didn't hear any of that. So the deflection board I pulled out first. That's the first thing we're going to look at. And when I pulled it out, I decided, well, that's that. We are definitely doing a video on this after I got a look at the deflection board. So here is the deflection board as pulled out. It sits in there like this. There are two fuses here. Right. There are three fuses here, and it looks like they're all good. So why is the game not working? That's probably why the game's not working. Oh yeah, that's definitely why the game's not working. Yeah, that would do it for sure. So some moron <laughs> I don't even know what they're doing what are, what in the world are they doing I guess they had it like that so that the two together make the same resistance so this was a 3 point 3.9 ohm and this is a Four hundred forty in. I don't even know what the hell. Ohmite four forty in. One R five hundred J. So I would guess maybe that's a one point five ohm resistor. Let's see. And I'm gonna tell you the kicker here in a minute. By the way, we're gonna fix this, so don't don't get discouraged, but. It's just amazing what you run into sometimes. Um, let me if I can get my multimeter out. Let's see if that's a 1.5 ohm resistor. 
if I can do it with one hand with all of the scarring on it. Yeah, my meter is off like 2.2 .2 ohms usually. So anyway, um, it's something like, I think that 1R500 is it's telling you that it's 1.5 ohms. I think, that's my guess. Okay, so what they did was to create something like a 3.8 ohm, they tied these two together like that and put that in there. And then at some point they fell down or something and it sent the, the power that runs through that into other components here and cooked everything. Look at that crap. They're killing me here with this stuff. <laughs> Right? So here's the kicker, okay? Here's the fun part. Atari put out a service bulletin. I think it was Atari. It may have been Wells. But Atari put out a service bulletin at some point in the life of these vector monitors and said, hey, you know those two big resistors that are at the top of the of the deflection board? And this there, was, there would have been one over here just like this one, which is what they're replacing. So Atari put out a press... Uh, not a press release, but a operator a service bulletin and said, hey, you know those two big resistors up at the top of the board? Yeah, you don't need those. So as a service, uh, as an upgrade, just cut them off and put a jumper wire across <laughs> them. Right? So it's common practice to just cut the resistor off. It, you don't even need it and just put a jumper from here to here. And so if you do that, the res you never need the resistors ever again. So my whole point is, when this resistor burn up, the one that was on there before, that the operator went through so much trouble to replace, and then ended up screwing up the whole board um, because of it, he didn't even need it. He could have just put a jumper wire across it. It's like it was the factory said to do that. Right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of the resistors. But now, since it's burned it up so much... I'm going to have to put jumpers all over it if I can even figure out where everything's supposed to connect. Look at all this crap. It's just, it's toasted. So, like, like look, that's a little piece of the trace that went somewhere. Uh, <laughs> what are they doing to me? What are they doing to me? So... I don't have another one of these boards either. I'm just going to have to find some really good pictures online or maybe in the manual it'll have some good pictures for me where I can see how it's supposed to look and then we're going to make it be how it's supposed to be. But yeah, that's what we're starting with. So I figured that'd be, that'd be a cool little video. We'll see if we can get this thing actually working. And then we'll see if that board works. It seems like the game board's working. You can hear it working. You just can't see it. And this is why. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go look in the manual, and I'm going to print out. Sometimes in the manual they actually have a picture of what these are, how the layout is on the board. I'm going to print that out, and then we're going to try to recreate something similar. And then we're going to clean all this up and see if we can uh, get it all uh, usable again. Wish me luck. Okay, so in the manual, they actually had a picture of the layout of the board. And uh, I confirmed that the P299 denotes that this is a Wells Garner V2000. And the, re the reason that I was saying that was uh, the Electro Home G05 is pretty much the same monitor, but it's slightly different. So you can't tell just by looking at it, usually, unless you're pretty good. But <laughs> I looked it all up, and it is definitely a Wells Garner V2000 deflection board. And so it had a picture in the in the manual of how it's set up, but it was backwards because it was showing the component side. It's showing you where all the components are laid out. But you can see that they've drawn in all of the traces. So what I did was I just flipped the image uh, on the computer and then printed it out real big so that we can see what all is missing. This would have been, this is the area obviously, so this would have been the resistor that burned up and all of these traces kind of like this are all screwed up. So I'm just going to have to... Uh, figure out where the traces were going and put jumper wires to make it connect to everything that it is supposed to connect to. So, um, this is what we're left with after cleaning the board up. So I just tried to get rid of everything that was burnt up 
and just broke it off the board because I'd rather have a big hole than have a bunch of like charred, screwed up stuff hanging on there. And I think it looks a lot worse than it actually is because really there were only two components that got messed, well, they got completely torn off the board. The resistor itself, which we don't need, we're just going to put a jumper wire. And then there was uh, a fourth uh, component there above those three that the mounting holes are completely gone for. And I don't think there was anything actually wrong with the board. I think that just because they had rigged it up, I think it just pushed over and touched stuff and caused the problem. I may be wrong, but we'll see, right? So I'm going to carefully use little jumper wires or something to um, jump over the traces that are missing and try to just replace the traces that um, we need but I think a lot of them are still there a lot of them are down here low so I trimmed back the traces you can see where I cut them so that they wouldn't flop around and touch the wrong thing um, but yeah, we got our work cut out here for us. Let me start adding components back in, and then we'll see what we end up with. All right, so the first thing I did was I got rid of the two resistors. So I took cut the one off, and then the other one that burnt off. If you look on the on the uh, thing, the way it worked was this trace comes up, and all it goes to is one side of the resistor, and then the resistor put it over to here. So we want this trace now to have a jumper just connecting straight to there. So since it's cut off about right there, I just made a jumper from there to there. And that will take care of that resistor. So that's most of the damage was just that. So we jumpered that. And then I put a jumper on the other one um, and cut the resistor off. So the two resistors are taken care of, right? And then, uh, so now I have to do a couple other little things in through here. Um, so let me see what I can get done on that. So I finished up what I was doing. I went through and I checked all the fuses. Three of them were the wrong fuse. So you, you gotta watch that. <laughs> That's how you get burned up boards. Um, I replaced the capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors. Um, and then on the front here, you can see I had to replace one resistor because it was all burned up. Now on the back, Look at the hackery. Tell me what you think of my hackery. So the big trace we talked about, okay? And then there's another big trace here in the middle. So if you look on the diagram, this trace went through and it doesn't touch anything and it goes under these four resistors and then it comes over here and all it does is it touches this side of this diode this the emitter of this transistor um, and then the positive side of these two caps and the emitter of this transistor so if you look on here so it would have went up through it and then came back up underneath the four resistors and then came back around and then this is it here so it hits this side of the diode that trend the emitter of the transistor the two positives of the caps and then the emitter of this transistor so the loop that went from here to here is missing. So since I had to replace this cap anyway, what I did was I took the, the leg of the cap and I stretched it over this, this thread, this, uh, this, uh, what am I calling it? Trace. Stretched it over this trace and grabbed this trace. So see this is the, the main trace here. It comes around and that's it right there. So I just grabbed it there and then I had to replace this cap down here because it's an electrolytic cap. So when I took the lead of it, it's on that big trace. I just jumpered it over there as well. And the reason I did it too was because since it was a, a you know kind of fat trace, I wanted to make sure there was plenty of metal for the juice to go through. <laughs> but basically Instead of it just being connected this way, it is now connected this way. But all, you know, this part of the trace where it hooked everything was still fine, so we just needed to make sure we get this trace connected to it. So that took care of that one. 
And then if you look at all the other ones, almost all of them are all still there. So, for instance, there's this... Um, uh, let's see what we're looking at. Um, there's this trace here. It comes up through here to this middle pin, the base on this transistor. And... Am I looking at the right thing? Uh, yeah, so it's all still there. But what it did was it curved, so it went through here, and then it curved around, and it was all it connected to was one side of a 1.5 meg resistor, which jumpered across and then connected over to this side. So because there is a god. This is what proves to me God ex God's existence. Remember how I was ranting and raving about how some guy had to put two resistors together to make one, right? And then if, if it bent over and touched something, it would fry. Because there is a God, perfect irony like this exists. Only God could do something this ridiculously I ironic. So I don't have a 1.5 meg resistor, so I had to put two resistors together to make one just like I was just ranting about these people doing. So I did. So I, that made the connection. There would have originally been a resistor there that burnt off of the board, so I had to rig it up. Okay, but that makes the connection that uh, that burnt up. And then the last thing is the right side of that resistor that's missing, and then the two resistors below it were connected to this little trace. So I, what the top resistor I replaced that's on the board... And then I ran the jumper over and grabbed it. So the only, everything's real good. The only thing I'm not super happy with is this bridge here. But I kind of, I ran it up like that because if I ran it down low, it'd be easier for it to bend over and touch something that it shouldn't. So the, the main issue would be is if this moves backwards and shorts against the, uh, the frame behind it, which I guess any of this could do, but there's little standoffs to keep it all from doing that. So... It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was, and hopefully it'll save this board. So the only thing we have left to do, I'm pretty confident, I've checked it like five times, I'm pretty confident that I've got everything connected right and there's no traces still broken. Uh, so the only thing that we have left to do is put it back in the game and see if it works. Now we don't know if the high voltage unit works. There may still be stuff burned up on this, I don't know. Um, but since none of the fuses were blown, I'm going to go with, Hopefully it's good to go, but we'll try it. So I'll pop it in the game, and we'll see if it comes on or does anything. Okay, so I just plugged it up. I haven't looked at the front yet. We're getting net glow, and if you listen real close, you can hear the vector chatter that I'm talking about. Listen real close. You hear that? It's like a buzzing and it changes and moves. That's how they're, it's, it's basically, it's creating all of the images. Now, I don't know if it's working, so let's see. Nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna try to turn up the brightness and see if we can get the image. And if we can't, then we're going to uh, mess with the high voltage unit. But I believe it's, it is up and running. I think on these though, the brightness, you can't get too, too good. Or maybe you can. Oh yeah, I see it there. Maybe the brightness is just turned down. No, it must be the high, well, it may be the high voltage unit. So we're gonna, we're gonna pull out the high voltage unit and check it out. Okay, I figured out that I hadn't turned the brightness all the way up, so I've turned it all the way up. And we're up and running, but it has its issues. I'm gonna see if it runs through its... I don't know what this crap is up here. All right, yeah, so we've got vector problems. Look at that. Okay, so uh, we're gonna put it in test mode and see what the test mode looks like. 
Okay, so, yeah, we got some kind of issue here. Hmm. It's off to one side, so it's not centered on the screen. Hmm. Let's see if we can... I'm trying to think what we're, what's going on here. Sometimes you can look at it and kind of figure out what must be the problem. Uh, so this line down here on the bottom should be vertical. But for some reason on the bottom half, it doesn't know that it's supposed to be all the way over. So it's a problem probably in the X position. So it, it's... The line should be way over here, but it's way over here instead. Um, I'm trying to look at it and see if it looks like everything. Yeah, see, the whole screen is too far to the left, so that's X position. The little light gradients, that's supposed. those are all supposed to be perfectly vertical. And if they're in the right place up and down, they're just in the wrong place left and right. So it's something in the X circuit, I think. And since the board is still running, and when you put it in test and take it out of test, you don't get any RAM errors. Let me see if I can throw it out of test while the lights are turned off. <laughs> yeah, see, so that's an asteroid. It's all screwed up. Oh, and it fixed itself. <laughs> A very strange little error that's going on here. Hmm. So it's something in the X circuitry, and everything is too far to the left, which is X too. You know, X is left and right, and Y is up and down. Okay, so whenever you have a problem like this, you kind of need to try to figure out what area of the board it's in and what's going on. So you. you the, you know, I was looking at the picture and we're trying to figure it out. And to me, it looks like the X is screwed up. It's not in the right position uh, left to right. Up and down, everything seems fine. But it, it's like some of the lines don't go as far enough where they should. And on that little gradient thing, some of them were too far this way. The whole screen's too far that way. So uh, just guessing. And again, I don't know. But just guessing, I think the problem, in Atari schematics are fantastic, which is one of the reasons that you can fix a lot of the Atari boards, because they put schematics that show every little thing, and they even have a little explanation down here of what each circuit does. But there is a circuit called the X and Y position counters, right? So I have, I have had problems in this area before because of these chips right here, these counters. These things, and I'm, you know, I don't know how all of these work, but these counters are problematic sometimes they fail so if you look this says these are the x signals coming into this this portion and these over here are the y signals well i think these y signals are fine so i think the problem is in the x circuit and we're having a problem with the position of it on the screen you know so i kind of think it's in this area so what i'm going to do is i'm going to print out this part of the schematic this part right here and I'm going to use my logic probe, and I'm going to see if all of these signals are here. All of these should be pulsing and doing their thing. And so I'm going to see if any of these signals are missing, stuck low, stuck high, anything like that. And if they are, it could lead me to a, a chip that's bad. But if I was just going to, if I had to bet money on it, and I, again, I am not like, I don't even understand how most of this stuff works. So I am not an expert on this at all. I'm just, uh, you know, stumbling in the dark like, like probably most of the people watching this video. If I had to guess, I would guess it's going to be one of these chips we're looking at right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One of these ten chips, I'm hoping, uh, will be the problem. So I'll print this out and then uh, I'll mess around with the logic probe and see if I find anything interesting. Okay, so it's about two hours later and uh, there's an arcade game turned on in the background. Nobody's actually wrecking their uh, Bigfoot monster truck out front. It's just on the game. They're wrecking a Bigfoot monster truck. <laughs> it's about two hours later, and I checked every one of these little everything, and everything seemed to be pulsing away fine. Everything's doing its thing. Um, 
down here it's a little weird both of these were low but i figured out eventually that when you put it in test they pulse but whenever it's in gameplay they're low or some, i guess it depends on what's on the screen so that wasn't an issue so i was just saying that oh, hopefully it's one of these chips guess what it's not one of those chips has nothing to do with them so i went back and i looked again at the test screen and it seemed like depending on where the the thing was on the screen that's when it got distorted so in the test screen if you looked the cross hatches it wasn't just that bottom right hand corner that's messed up it's uh of course in the middle where the 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 gradient is screwed up and a couple other places if you look there's there's issues here and there so i start thinking after this creates everything it sends the signals all out here and it says dac x one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so dac means digital analog converter and it's the x signal there's also one for all the y signals so it sends it over to the video output section of the board so these lines which is all of the information that the game has made go into this uh, dac chip so i don't completely understand what a dac chip does but we'll read here x and y outputs the dac's digital analog converters each receive binary numbers from the vector generators position counter outputs that's what we were just looking at these numbers represent the location of the beam on the monitor for the non-inverted x-axis the numbers range from 0 to 1023 where 0 is at the far left of the monitor screen 512 is at the center and 1023 is at the far right for the non-inverted y-axis and they're saying non-inverted uh, uh, well, we better keep reading. I'm not so sure. Uh, for the non-inverted y-axis, the numbers range from 128 to 996, where 128 is at the bottom of the monitor screen, 512 is at the center, and 996 is at the top. When the x-axis and y-axis are inverted, the monitor picture is turned upside down. This is used for a two-player cocktail game. So whenever it, whenever it goes to the second player, the screen has to display completely upside down so that they can see it on their side. Uh, orientated r correctly the digital and analog converters convert these binary number inputs to current outputs so an analog output the DAC's current outputs are applied to the pin 6 inputs of current to voltage converters C12 and A12 so C12 since we're just looking at the at the X circuit C12 is a TL082 chip so I'm gonna read that again the DACs convert these binary number inputs to current outputs, so it's making a current. The DACs current outputs are applied to the pin six inverter to the pin six inputs of current to voltage converters C12 and A12. From the current to voltage, uh, from the current to voltage converters, the signal is fed to two sample and hold circuits. One is non-inverted and the other is inverted. The non-inverted sample and hold consists of one stage of analog switch D12 and capacitor blah, blah, blah for the x-axis, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. So all of this. So this is how it sends the signal out, right? So I started looking at it again, and I, I remembered one that I had worked on several years ago where the screen remember the screen everything is shifted to the left and you can adjust that on the monitor but usually people don't go and screw around with the tube there's a ring on the tube to adjust uh, the centering and usually people don't go mess with that a lot of people don't even know it's there so usually if it's shifted like that there's something wrong with the board and so I started thinking hmm well I can't figure out what's making all of the the asteroids break apart and everything so let me just fix that centering problem because I kind of had an idea of what causes that because I've seen it before on a game that I had a long time ago. So on on the uh, on the game that I had before, this TL082 causes it to shift to the left or the right. And then if you've got the other one for the y-axis, it causes it to shift up or down. And I had seen it before with one that I'd done. And so I went and I looked on KLOV, the killer list of video games, and I, I Googled, uh, or I, I just searched on KLOV, uh, C12. And so I, I typed asteroid C12. And so immediately an, another post popped up where another gentleman was saying, uh, 
yeah, I had one of these one time where the screen was shifted to the left and it ended up being the TL082 at C12. So I thought, well, you know what? Let's replace that chip and that'll center it again, hopefully. And then uh, we'll see if that's how much of it's being caused by that chip and how much of it is something uh, either in this counter circuit that I can't find or in something, you know, some other circuit in the, in the game. So I replaced the TL082 at C12. And that completely fixed it. Can you believe it? Look at this. It's, it's pretty much perfect. Looks great. Now, I still haven't, uh, I still haven't uh, rebuilt the high voltage section, but we're gonna do that too. But um, let me knock it out of test mode because we gotta, we gotta look at something else here too. Everything is doing what it does. Look at that. Everything looks just fine. Okay, so let's look at the board real quick. Uh, we got to check something out. All right. So one of the things that I did was I removed this board. It was connected in C5, and then on this, the other end of it is a little clip that fits around a chip. I've seen these before on uh, video game systems, like they would make a, uh, what did they call those? Back in the day, if you had like a PlayStation, you could put a, or an Xbox, you could put a chip in it that would make it um, play burned games and stuff. And so they came with this little, I can't remember what these are called, but a little clip that just sits over a chip and it makes these metal pins all touch the pins on the side of the chip and you can do that to like grab signals off of chips that you need to run other boards and stuff right so this went in c5 and this little clip was up here on n11 so it just pops right off so i've read online that they make speed hacks that have something to do with chip c5 so what i did was the chip that's supposed to be in c5 is a 74161 i had one of those so i just popped it in and the game's running exactly the same. I tried that earlier whenever I was trying to figure out what was making the graphics be all screwed up because I thought, well, maybe it has something to do with this little add-on kit. But that didn't change anything. But now we're going to test and see if that really is a speed-up hack. So I'm going to set up the tripod. We'll play the game as it is uh, for a minute. Uh, and then I'll reinstall this and see if it really does speed it up. It looks like there's a pot even here. So maybe you turning that speeds up the game. I don't know. Um, if that's what it is, but we'll see. So I'll set up the tripod. We'll play it for just a couple of seconds. We'll see the, what speed it's playing at, and then I'll, I'll reinstall this, and we'll play it again and see what speed it's playing at once this is in there. Okay, so this is the speed without the speed-up hack. I think it's just a standard board, but we'll find out. So we'll play it just a little bit, and um, I'll see how fast the ship can go, and we'll see how fast the asteroids are moving and all that. <laughs> All right, so. Okay, so I think this is normal speed. Some of, them, some of them are moving real fast, but keep in mind they can, you know, like on, in the in the normal game, the asteroids would move fast after a while. Yeah, man, this is just the normal speed.
it seems like we fixed the deflection board, right? It's deflecting very well. My... Oh, there's the little one. Okay, I wanted to see him. Okay, so I think everything's moving at normal speed. Okay, yeah, everything looks good. All of the uh, sounds were there. I guess I didn't get the um, free guy. I gotta, I'll play it again later. I guess let's make sure that the, make sure that the uh, free guy. I screwed up my own name. Anyway, uh, let's reinstall that that uh, that speed up hack and see what that does. All right. So the first thing I notice is the um, the screen is kind of flickering. The brightness. I don't know if that's just the uh, Oh, you know what? It's pulsing. The screen is pulsing with the uh, start buttons. And the start buttons are the uh, are what that N11 chip runs, so I don't know. Might have something screwed up or something, but we'll, we'll try playing it and see if it plays any different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot faster. It's probably twice as fast. The screen's not pulsing anymore because it, um, uh, whenever you're playing the, the, uh, the start, wow, this is pretty crazy. I've never played it fast like this. Um, the screen's not pulsing anymore because the lights don't blink while you're actually playing it. Good Lord. This thing is on crack. All right. So let's play it for real once. Let's see if I can get anywhere. Music's faster too, isn't it? So basically, it's just sped the entire game up. <laughs> All right, it's a little harder to play, but you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to turn that pot all the way up and see if it makes it really fast. Be back in a second. Okay, so I turned it all the way clockwise. Let's see if it's any faster or slower. Uh, I don't know. I think it's I think it's slower than it just was, maybe. about the same I can't Mm. Okay, so is that faster or slower? I don't know. All right, so now I'm going to turn it all the way counterclockwise and see what it does. Okay, so we're all the way counterclockwise now. Hmm. I don't know what that does. I don't think this is any... Maybe it doesn't do anything. Pretty 
cool. Okay, and just for completion's sake, these are the Dash 2 ROM revisions, so it's the second set of ROMs. Now, a lot of times people say, why didn't you film everything whenever you were checking all of the chips? Well, for a couple reasons. First of all, it takes forever, so it would this video would be a couple hours long. You know, I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, uh, knowledgeable enough to go right to the right pin and okay, this must be the problem. Now I did give you the solution and showed you what the problem ended up being, right? But I didn't film all the other stuff because it would have took too long, and then second because I screwed up a bunch of times. So I don't want to film it and then you say, oh well, I saw a guy on a video he said to replace this counter here. And that would fix the problem whenever the asteroids are split up. Well, when I replaced this counter when I wasn't filming, that didn't fix the problem. So remember I said that those two were low? Well, I replaced the counter, and uh, the one of the outputs was still low, or both of them were really. The outputs were still low. And then that output went over here to this 7404 chip. So I thought, and it was going, uh, when I put it in test mode, it was pulsing. And the 7404 chip was getting a pulse, but it was putting out like a high. It wasn't sending it back out. So I was thinking, hmm, well, maybe that chip's bad. So I swapped that chip. That didn't fix it. So this was just me spinning my wheels trying to figure out the problem. So then once I figured out, well, everything in that section is probably fine. Remember, I said I went to the output stage, and I figured out uh, that it was this chip on the output stage. But I didn't figure that out first. First, I tried swapping the, the digital to analog converter. It was just like this one if you rewind the video. So first I tried swapping that, and those aren't really that cheap either, by the way. Um, luckily, I was able to pull the old one out and didn't screw up any pins or anything, so I've still got it. But um, that didn't fix it either. So once, I, once that didn't fix it, I piggybacked a good one on this one, and I saw that it shifted it back to the middle, and it fixed some of the stuff. So whenever I actually took the old one off and put the new one in, a socket it fixed it and that's when i showed you that on the board i mean on the on the video so you know a lot of times it's just not possible for at least for me maybe it is for other people it's not possible for me to film everything and show you every little part because i make mistakes a lot of times in the stuff that i'm filming so i don't want to film something and you know what if you stop the video there or whatever i don't want to put out information that's bad if i can help it i'm sure i'm still putting out information that's bad in some uh, uh instances but uh, whenever I upload a video, I like it to have a beginning and an end. You know, I don't like it to have where, well, I didn't figure it out this time. Oh well, if um, you know, or or I try three or four things and it didn't work, and then I put it out there like that. So, if you're seeing this video, it's because I've already finished the the game. You know, I don't upload halfway done stuff. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to remove my speed hack. I'm probably going to sell it to somebody. Somebody will want that. Um, I'm going to put my 74161 chip back in. And it's a pretty non-destructive hack. All I did was put a socket here that you can easily put the chip back in. And then uh, put a little piggyback thing up there that you can just pop right off. Now, if you look to this chip right here is a 74161, uh, which is what's supposed to be in the socket below. So basically, they just used it to grab some signals, I guess, and somehow change the rate of the whole game. That's the NMI circuit that connects to the uh, 6502 here. So I don't know how the NMI circuit works, but apparently you can manipulate it and make the game run faster. Um, I wonder if they're using the voltage off of the LEDs or something. That's a strange way to do it, but it works perfect. Old school, too. You can tell by looking at this board that it's probably from the early 80s. Very interesting. Okay, so I'm going to pull that off. I'm going to put the board back in. I'm going to rebuild the high voltage section. I've got a uh, power switch down here that I have to replace. Uh, and then we're going to do some cosmetic stuff. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all said and done. So we finished it up, moved it over. Check it out. It's looking pretty good. It's not that bad. It's only one thing on it that I don't really think is 100%. But most of it's 100%. I mean, all the scratches like we talked about, maybe that's just 80%, but it's close enough to 100% that I'm cool with. <laughs> but the control panel, you know, they painted over half of the art, but you don't really use it. And on Asteroids Deluxe, 
it looks more like that because the control panel panel is smaller. So I wish it had all the rest of the art, but it must have been worn out. So they painted over it. They make a wrap where you can put a new overlay on the whole thing. So I was going to do that, but then I thought, Ugh. man, I don't know what's better, half of the original art or a brand new control panel art, you know, that's not painted. So I don't know. So we're still thinking about that because it kind of looks pretty good like that, really. But it's not if you know, you know that half of the little red and white and blue boxes are missing. So I don't know. Jury's still out on that one. But the good thing is it looks pretty good and it's working really good. Look at that. Look at check out that monitor. Oh, and we we did rebuild the high voltage uh, e, well, EHT assembly, uh, the cage, and put it back in, and everything's cool. It's all good, and uh, it's nice and bright, and it's playing good. But I guess I should prove that it's playing good by setting up the tripod, right? So let's set up the tripod and we'll play it a little bit just to make sure everything's good. Okay, we already played it a little bit. I had to take that deflection board back out because the brightness was a little touchy, so I replaced the brightness knob and then was able to adjust the brightness really well, and it's nice and bright. It's almost hurting my eyes, it's so bright. It's that bright, people. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but whenever you play a vector in the dark like this, if you've got it up pretty bright, you can see like little trails behind everything. Um, you, it doesn't look like I can see it on the camera, maybe. But here, my eyes, in person, I can see it. It's such a bright light that it leaves a little trail behind it, I guess just, you know, a. a I guess just in your eye, you know, um, and especially whenever the the really bright lights, like the sh the bullets and things like that, they leave like a a really bright trail going behind everything. So, but we'll play it a little bit. Oh, they got me. assumed uh, death some Russia stuff going on there what was it mutual assumed destruction also known as a uh, well I better not say that was staring at the uh, I was staring at the one asteroid that was flying off I thought it had a little dot in the middle but I think I keep misspelling my own name but I thought it had a uh, little dot in the middle of it but it did not and you you may not know this but when I film these videos the reason I film myself playing them is not because I'm some super player or anything I'm clearly not but because I'm testing it. I need to play it a little bit. To see if there's any issues that pop up once it's been turned on a few minutes. Oh, they got me again. I, need to, I still need to try to get an extra man, don't I? To make sure that the extra man sound works. Woo! 
I got out of the way. Close to an extra man. There we go, we got it. They got me. Okay, so I think everything's working pretty good. The only thing that I noticed is maybe, possibly, I'm going to mention it in case somebody else noticed it. Possibly, when the little ships came out, the noise was slightly higher pitched than normal. Maybe. I don't know. I might be tripping. Regardless, it sounded pretty good, so I'm just going to leave it. But it might have been a little higher than it normally is. I don't know. Um, since, I've mentioned this in other videos since these games made analog sounds so or I think it's how they is that how they describe it or is it referred to as discrete sounds basically the board doesn't have a, a sound chip that's playing a recording it has a uh, it creates a sound with waveforms and like resistors and capacitors and transistors doing their thing so it's basically uh, like there's a white, no there's a noise generator circuit, and it, and then there's like a, a, you know, sine waves or whatever. I don't know what they're called. Uh, that it manipulates by running it through a filter or whatever, and it makes a different. It's basically making noise, and it it changes depending on the resistor. Well, if you've got a resistor that's a slightly different value in one board than it is in another board, you get a slightly different sound. So it could be that this board has always sounded exactly like that from the factory. If there's even anything different, it might sound exactly like all the other ones. But uh, you, you, you're never going to have two Asteroids boards where the sounds are exactly identically the same. They're going to be a little bit off, some of them more than others, just because it... Uh, you know, if you buy like a, let's say that the circuit has a 100 ohm resistor in it. Well, those 100 ohm resistors usually had a tolerance of 10%. So that means that it could have been a 90 ohm resistor or it could have been a 110 ohm resistor. So if one board has a 90 ohm resistor in it and another board has a 110 ohm resistor in it, they're both considered 100 ohm resistors, but they would make the sound sound a little bit different. And that's for each sound and... You know, there's all kinds of that stuff in there and little transistors that, you know, whatever. Or there could be a fault on the board, too. It could be a voltage is too high or something like that. But since it's close enough that I can't even tell for sure that it's doing it, we're going to leave it alone. Thing plays good, sounds good. Smack it on the butt and send it out the door. So there it is. So that is Atari's Asteroids, and we fixed another one. And boy, it looks great. Look at that right there. Even got the coin door bulbs working. Cool game. Hope you enjoyed the repair video. Now, whenever we fix these, we sell them. 
so uh, we bought this from a gentleman probably a month ago and um, you saw all of the issues that it had that is that is that same deflection board that had the uh, hole burnt in it it looks great everything's cool um, we bought it we fixed it up and now we're going to sell it so the games that we have available for sale we put on our website so if you go to if you're interested in that if you go to lionsarcade.com it's full of all that stuff so it shows all of our games that are available right now bunches of pictures of all of them and prices and all of that stuff so this one is going on there tonight because we just finished it up and whenever we sell one we take it down immediately so uh, it's always up to date even if you're watching this video years from now it is now near the end of 2019. So even if you watch this years from now, our website will still be up and we will still have it up to date. Trust me. Uh, so you can go check that out. Or you can come by and see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is about 15 miles south of Charlotte, North Carolina. We're just over the border. and We've got a whole building full of stuff like this. Um, so stop by and see us if you're local or check us out on our website, lionsarcade.com or if you can't do any of that or you don't want to do any of that, just subscribe to us here on YouTube. We do videos like this all the time. And give us a thumbs up for our trouble. The thumbs up is right there. Don't click the one that's, see, the thumbs up would be like here. Don't click the thumbs down one. So now that I said that, a bunch of jerks are going to click the thumbs down one. But that's okay. Click the thumbs up if you want to. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. We will see you on the next one.